I think it is, I, I, well, I can only echo the outrage and the disgust, I think, that people have raised about this action. Uh, previous uh, speakers, more articulate than I. Um, but I just want to make the point that there is nothing in the bylaws that says anything about restricting you know, the role of the LSB to the interim position. And in fact, um, we shouldn't. How about the interim EB? Yeah. I am ready to take a vote. Yep. I'm sorry, that thought that I misread it. Matthew? I just want to say that they talk about the interim. Yeah, use the mic. A mic. Use the mic, buddy. The, the, the decision to dismiss our That's interim no order. the decision to enter to dismiss our interim IG was made by an interim ED. Please, folks, I get the sense from hearing the debate that people are talking to express themselves rather than to convince others. I, as chair, get the sense that we are ready to vote. Please bear in mind that we have an agenda to process. With that remark, is anybody desirous of the floor before I call the roll call on the amendment? Yeah, I would like to take my second. I'll do that. You would like to do what? I would like to take my second. Please, use the microphone. Tracy, second on the amendment. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it'll be fast. Um, I just want to clarify, Craig, that I wasn't at all saying that the reason for the change, as it, as I understand it, had anything to do with the LSB's evaluation. As I recall, the LSB debated for a considerable amount of time whether or not it should evaluate an interim GM and finally came to the conclusion that it should. There was a great deal of doubt on this body whether we should go through that process and all kinds of questions about the fairness of the process and who got to participate, staff that weren't contacted and so on and so on and there's a minority report and all kinds of nonsense going on. But the upshot is that um, if in fact that had been the motivating scenario then we might have been looking at something like this 12, 12 months ago. So for you to state that I said that that was the reason is not correct. What I said was the reason, as I understood it, specifically had to do with the handling of complaints and concerns that the executive director, who is in fact the supervisor of all the station GMs, felt was something that she could not allow to continue. I mean, that's my understanding of her reasons, and I'm sure that she will elaborate. You can shake your head, but I'm just saying what you attributed to me saying is okay. One of the reasons in Robert's Rules of Order that people in the formal thing, and I'm about to insist upon this, is that people don't mention people by name because we get into a back and forth about our attack and defend. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the sense. Thirty seconds, I promise. Use the microphone, please. Please use the microphone. Okay. All right. Uh, you know, the distinction between an IGM and GM is lies in this thing that um, uh, IGM is not hired through the same process that was just you know read off the bylaws. IGM is exclusively hired by the ED. Therefore, if if you want to be consistent with your reading of the bylaws, you will find a contradiction there. So the IGM is not hired through the same process, the same rules do not apply, and therefore the firing of the IGM does, is, is not done by the board, or it's through the same power of the board either. The chair has a sense... That was exactly 30 seconds. Thank you, sure. <laughs> Was the member speaking the, to me? Or the the chair has the sense that the board is ready to vote on the amendment. The amendment is that in the following reading, the word participation, and I will read both words, will be struck and in its place will be inserted the word consultation. The KPFA local station board opposes any move by Pacifica to remove or replace a KPFA manager without the meeting participation to be changed to consultation without the meaning consultation of KPFA's meaningful, 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 meaningful consultation. consultation 
of KPFA's elected social board in consultation with KPFA's paid and unpaid staff. We are ready for a roll call vote and Mr. Secretary. This is on the amendment. This is, the amendment. This is to change, change that word. Uh, and I just want to note for the record that Mel Sanders has arrived. So, welcome. Okay, so, uh, so, we all ready for the, yep. okay, so here we go, we're, we're, we're voting on amending this to change that word from participation to consultation. Agamir? Yes. Agamir, yes. Alderson, I will vote no. Bernstein, not here. Edward Steeker? No. Edward Steeker? No. Fuentes Roman? No. Fuentes Roman? No. Gans? Gans abstains. Goldmacher? No. Goldmacher? No. Helenan? No. Helenan? No. Hernandez? No. Hernandez? No. Johnson? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Coburn? Yes. Coburn? Yes. Kurtzwell? Not here. Moore? No. Moore? No. Morgan? Not here. Pritchett? Not here. Rosenberg? Yes. Rosenberg, yes. Sanders? No. Sanders, no. Sawyer? No. Sawyers, no. Siegel, not here. Sterling? I vote no. Sterling, no. Tao Nichols? Yes. Tao Nichols, yes. Travis? No. Travis, no. Whipperman? No. Whipperman, no. White? Pass. White will pass. Wilkinson? No. Wilkinson, no. And White, do you, uh, Burton, do you want to vote now or do you abstain? It's not it's necessary. Not voting. Okay. So that's 13 yes, 5 no. I'm sorry? Sorry? 13. 13 no. Okay, 13 no, 5 yes, 1 abstention, 1 not voting. Okay. And so that's defeated. I'm glad to see that the board's eagle eyes go on someone else, not all of them. We are now, I am now ready to call, ask the secretary to call a vote on the original motion without amendment, once again to be read. The KPFA local station board opposes any move by Pacifica to remove or replace the KPFA manager without the meaningful participation of KPFA's elected social station board <laughs> and consultation <laughs> with KPFA's paid and unpaid staff. We, we got a social board in need of a ghostbuster. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are we ready? Yeah. Okay, I'm here. I'll pass. We'll pass. We'll come back to you. Alderson, I vote yes. Bernstein, <coughs> not here. Edward Steeker. Yes. Edward Steeker, yes. Fuentes Ramon. Yes. Fuentes Ramon, yes. Gans. Yes. Gans, yes. Goldmacher. Yes. Goldmacher, yes. Hallinan. Yes. Hallinan, yes. Hernandez. Yes. Hernandez, yes. Johnson. Abstain. Johnson abstains. Coburn. Abstain. Coburn abstains. <laughs> Kurtzweil, not here. Uh, Moore. Yes. Moore, yes. Morgan, not here. Pritchett, not here. Rosenberg. Rosenberg abstains. Sanders? Yes. Sanders, yes. Sawyer? Yes. Sawyer, yes. Siegel, not here. Sterling? Yes. Sterling, yes. Pam Nichols? Uh, no. Pam Nichols, no. Travis? Yes. Travis, yes. Wickerman? Yes. Wickerman, yes. White? For the record, yes. White, yes. Wilkinson? Yes. Wilkinson, yes. And then Agamir? Abstain. Agamir abstains. Okay, so let's see if I can get this right this time. 15 yes, one no, three abstentions. Uh, oh, yep, yeah, you're right. Boy. Okay. Mr. Chair? Would you repeat? Did you change something? Sure, yes, I'm sorry. It was 15 yes, one no, and four abstentions. Brian Edward Speaker. Mr. Chair, issues have come up during debate, which I think. Uh, merit the board clarifying its position on the tenure of the particular general manager we have now. I move 
we pass a motion that says the local station board supports continuing the tenure of Andrew Phillips as interim general manager until the permanent hire process can be completed. There's a motion and second. Do you have that read in? Or we have that right read in? Um, on, on procedure. On procedure. <laughs> I move that we extend this agenda item for 15 minutes in order to take up this motion. Um, I can't see the clock. There's a reflection. Yeah. Okay. That, to one o'clock. Yeah. Uh, procedure. All those in favor of the procedure and motion to extend the agenda item to 1 o'clock by that clock, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Nays? I'm sorry, abstentions? It passes. Okay, now we're ready for debate on the motion. Uh, Tracy, I see your hand. I see. Uh, Sharon, I'm sorry, I'm going crazy too early in the meeting. Uh, let me see if there are any other. The only two. Tracy, you've got the floor. Okay, well, two questions, I think. The first question is, so the last motion was that the LSB, the paid staff, and the unpaid staff would be consulted with regard to a decision, but now you want to make that decision without having had any consultation whatsoever with the um, individual who made the decision. That doesn't really add up. Um, it makes it clear that, you know, there's really no desire to get any information about what happened and why, because you already know what you want to advocate for before you've even had a conversation. The second thing is, what is, what permanent hiring process are you talking about extending? The board doesn't have a permanent hiring process underway, so... I'm going to make a motion later. Oh, you're going to make more motions, okay. Um, <laughs> no cross table talk, please. Okay, well, you might want to clarify that motion because you're talking about extending a process that you have not begun. doesn't make a lot of sense. Okay, um, sure. Okay. Uh, Brian, did you have any other? Excuse me, I, my apologies. I see Renfe. Um, so, so, Tracy essentially echoed uh, in her first part of remarks, it echoed what I wanted to say. Um, I, I said it before, I'm not in a position to judge this decision because I don't have enough input and information. Thank you. The next person is George. Please pass you the mic. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, I want to say that I went along with the language of the motion we just passed because it supported any GM, um, and that's more our purview, I believe, and I agree with Sharam that we need more information to make the decision about whether or not to support Andrew in this position, because we've been given no information about why um, this decision was made, and obviously was not based on something that this board did a year ago, so there must be something that we are not privy to, and so I think this is too premature to make this decision right now. But I do want to say, again, that so the notion that a general manager would be an interim or not, um, that decision is so important that the LSB must be involved in that decision. And so we do need more information to make that decision. That's all. Who's next? The other names are Ramesses and Carol. So I would like to speak against the motion, but I want to first clarify, was there a second to the motion? Are we in motion right now? Okay. All right. Uh, I just didn't catch it when it happened. Thanks. Um, it does feel like when I first heard the motion, like it was just kind of felt like, well, why wasn't that piece part of the last motion? I feel like it just kind of makes me wonder what motion is coming next. I do think it's too much and it's overwhelming. Um, I do hear the points made, you know, started by Tracy. In regards to well, if we set up this, if we are made a motion that eventually passed, that's asking for all this meaningful participation, then why are we now trying to make a decision, right? And feel like now we're kind of undercutting, you know, like, you know, bypassing the first motion. So that just from that, I feel like I would be against it. But I would, I do want to recommend, you know, and I've been in tons of meetings with Robert's Rules of Orders that 
if there is something really heated to try to you know come to these meetings and, and ask for a specific time frame for debate you know and, and discussion so that the whole room can bend out where it's at and understand better where we as a board can make a better decision together rather than getting, getting caught up in Robert's rules traps you know motions and counter motions you know where the debates framed you know by the roller coaster and the tracks already set in the direction that it goes and we have no control over it right this is like going around in circles many times when we're trapped in motions and Robert's rules and it can be really really honestly at the service for what I think is a community organization you know and not you know Washington DC where public interest you know and filthy corporations you know run the system instead of Robert's rules specifically for this to happen right so please you know if y'all can take that recommendation it'd be great for the future but for now I'm, I'm speaking against the motion I am absolutely outraged to come here and find out that uh, Andrew is that there's considering to fire him. I'm outraged at that. And as a union person, that there is no anything anywhere about why and that we're having a board meeting now and we're not going to have a board meeting before he's fired and we're not willing to take a position knowing what we do know about Andrew is, I think, uh, just is, is not right that we have to take a position based on what we know. If it turns out that tomorrow he's accused of stealing or of something that's horrible, of course that would take precedence and what we've done here today based on what we know would be undercut. But he deserves our support based on what he's done here. And that's period. The next person on the list is Mark, followed by Margie, and that ends the list as of this moment. Uh, Frank. And Frank. I, I'm taking my own Margie is dropping. Mark, you have the floor. Well, I was just going to point out that the agenda already has on there, and has been out for a couple of days, that we're going to be introducing motion, theoretically, <clears throat> to begin the program director recruitment. Um, and I believe there was going to be a motion as well as that for general manager, but... I may be wrong, but at the same time, it means that the motions are moving forward, that the board is moving forward to get the hiring done. To that end, <coughs> and given the fact of what was stated earlier, with summaries indicating that Andrew could go ahead and apply as the next hiring round, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't be objecting to this motion to get the, program, the hiring process started and underway unless people don't want to get the hiring process started. I mean, this is our way into it, people. Uh, or you can just sit around and wait for the interim ED to fire the interim GM. And <coughs> what are we going to get now, an interim LSB to get in and do things? Is that what we're looking to do? We need to start taking action. This is one step to doing it. I support, I support this motion in terms of getting a permanent GM hire whether it's Andrew or not. But at the same time, we need somebody in rather than a 90-day wonder who's going to be walking in and walking out when the process is done. At the very least, we'll maintain Andrew until the permanent hire is done. And we won't have to go through the madness of trying to reintegrate a new hire who may or may not know how the station runs, who may or may not have good relations with staff and with listeners. This at least gives us a bit of continuity without the insanity. Thank you. Frank, please uh, hear the mic. Well, I, I'm, I want to support Andrew, and I probably will vote yes on this, but I just I can't help find it so ironic that you're almost in the same position JR is in. <laughs> We're about to vote on something without knowing exactly what happened. And I think that's what happened to JR, kind of, you know. We don't all know exactly what happened. And now we all don't know exactly what happened here. And I supported JR not in what he did and the things, some of the things he did, but his right to be able to speak out to things. And that's probably why I'll vote yes to that I want Andrew to stay on as interim general manager because I like Andrew and what he's done. But I'd also want to know that he would take some proactive steps like he did for Upfront when Upfront was created. You reached out, you did something. I feel like the lack of reaching out and doing something is like where we're at. And I do feel like it's so ironic that you're in this situation right now that we're voting on this. And that people you're even arguing against it. You know? It's just 
it just strikes me out it's too ironic there, but I will, probably will be voting yes because I do want you to stay around. But I would really appreciate some some action to um, take care of those issues, you know. Thank you, Frank Donald and Brian here on the list. Thank you, Frank. Speaking of ironies, thank you, Frank. I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> I find it terribly ironic that the Pacific National Board, through its entity of IED, while having as was referred to earlier as turmoil and volatility at WBAI and WPFW, wants to add fuel to the fire and now create further volatility here at KPFA. All in the name, I am sure, of community radio. Local participatory community radio. Isn't that the banner that's used? by those folks on the PNB, and some of whom are on the PNB from this local board, I might point out. So you want to create more chaos here at KPFA, as if we have not had our fair share. And I just wonder, what is the thinking behind that? What do you hope to gain? What is the real agenda? Those are the questions we really need to be asking. Because we know of nothing that Andrew has done uh, month to month as the local station board that would warrant an abrupt decision by an IED to say, you're out of here. I ask anybody in this room to provide me with the proof. I want to make it clear why I'm bringing the motion. Um, it became clear in debate that some people who represent us on the PNB might be disposed to argue that this local board has already participated in a decision and that came down on the side of getting rid of our interim general manager. I don't want that argument to stand. I want us to be clear where we stand today. And I think it's a simple question. I mean, it, it, as someone who works at the station, here's who I look at. I want our manager picked through an open hire process where the best candidates we get compete against each other. The question is, what should our situation be in Telden? And I look around the station, and it's reasonably stable. We've been beating our fund drive goals. We've been making more money in less time than we did a year ago. People are pleasant to each other in the hallways. Sharom and I went out to dinner a week and a half ago. Thank you, by the way. He picked up the tab. It's shockingly, it's shockingly good at KPFA right now. And I sit on the national board. We get reports on what's going on at the rest of the network. We got financial statements at our national board meeting. Every single station plus the national office is bleeding money. Red ink at the bottom of their income statement, with one exception. That exception is KPFA, which posted $115,000 surplus because the station is relatively healthy right now. KPFA has been wiring money to WBAI so they don't bounce their payroll checks. KPFA wired $35,000 to Free Speech Radio News so they would not go off the air. KPFA is in good enough shape that this is the last place we should want to shake up right now. Now, fair enough. The executive director can come to us tomorrow and say, we have evidence that your general manager murdered someone, so he think he should be out of a job. I think we would all happily change our position on his tenure at that point. But we need to be clear about what our position is until she talks to us. Okay, time, folks, it is four minutes to the end of our extended time. Craig is next, and Tracy for her second, and Frank for his second. Craig. Janet, Janet. Janet. Well, I was going to say what Brian was said, what what Brian said, but just to point out, this does not preclude us changing our minds. Um, if new information surfaces, and we can do that, um, so, and we have, but I agree with Brian. I agree with Brian that we need a statement of position right now. So I will be voting yes on this, and I urge everybody else to vote yes on it. Can, can we call the question on this? Yeah. 
and try. The question can be called. Yeah. Nice call there's two more people left. Should we just finish? Our question has been called. It's up to the group to make a decision on it. Well, you can't call the question until you go through the order. It's a two-thirds vote. Call the folks. It takes a two-third vote. Um, with that in mind, uh, Jose? I'll, I'll withdraw it. Okay. Folks, it's helpful if we have one speaking, or I should say one person yelling at me at a time. Um, Janet, I'm putting you in because you're ahead of the people who have already spoken. Okay, so first I would like the uh, motion to be reread, and then I might have a, a, uh, an amendment. The KPFA Local Station Board supports continuing the tenure of Andrew Phillips as Interim General Manager until the process of hiring a permanent General Manager is complete. So my amendment would be somewhere in there um, based on the information that we have as of this date. That's a friendly um, amendment, and I'm going to put it at the very beginning. Give me a second to jot it down. The amendment, which is my understanding, is accepted by the maker and the seconder as a friendly amendment would read as follows. Based on the information we have as of this date, the KPFA Local Station Board supports continuing the tenure of Andrews Phillip, Andrew Phillips as Interim General Manager until the process of hiring a permanent general manager is complete. With that in mind, do the people who are on the list still desire the floor? Ask I, if there's objection to the I beg your pardon? Ask if there's objection to the Any objections? Any objections? I hear, but I'm just thinking of whether if it's accepted as a friendly amendment. There's no such thing as a friendly amendment. Okay. The Is there objection to the amendment as being, becoming part of the original motion? All right. I see that uh, people would still like Tracy. to come Tracy and Frank, and we're at our 12 o'clock, at uh, 1 o'clock time. Tracy, you are the floor. Well, I think a couple of things should be said here. One is, um, I mean, there's people dying to fire to fire the manager at PFW. There's people dying to fire the manager at BAI, probably most of the station's community by now. KPFK, not so bad, but there's definitely some talk about it pretty consistently, and there's a whole insurgent thing in Texas. So I guess what I'm sort of saying here is the difference is that these individuals have employment contracts, and they were hired by way of a local station board pool, that selected them and then sent them to an ED that selected them. So it's a different process. Um, and the lack of clarity about that seems really confusing on a board where many of these people understand that Len Len Grigio was hired on exactly that same process. And at the time, we were told that because she was an interim, all kinds of things were different. So we just, I think we have to be careful, and Joy brought this issue up, which I think is correct, is that we make the process malleable depending on the particular argument that we're trying to make at the time, and the process has to be consistent no matter who it is. So if an interim can be dropped in and dropped out at the pleasure of a given executive director, then that's what the policy is. Um, the second thing that I'm going to say is Schramm's correct in some of the things that he brought up about the impossibility of this situation. He's also correct in some of the things that he said about the difficulty of the situation that Andrew has faced all the way through, including the, the period of time when he was the, the, the devil incarnate and this current stirring show of support. In both cases, it's a difficult and a possible situation to navigate. I don't want to question the happy hallways concept, but I do want to tell you guys that when the network looks at KPFA, 
there's a pile of grievances this high. I think we're up to 10. They don't see your happy, smiling universe. They see trouble on a stick. There is no other station in the network that has more than two. You guys are five times over the least happy, the least harmonious workplace in this environment. And it's perceived to be a huge problem. People look at Berkeley and go, oh my god, what an effing mess. I mean, that's the reality. So, you know, sometimes you have to get reality to connect with what's going on in your own heads. Um, okay, I'll stop there. <laughs> the happy hallways analogy, that was good. <laughs> anyway, I would say I, it is, I feel better with Andrew there, but we got to look, who is it happy for? You know, I'm glad you're happy. Um, JR ain't happy. I'm not very happy. It's, I'm live and state, mystery status. I am happy, but the apprenticeship program is not doing well. We're still struggling. We were amongst the first ones to fill the cuts when it first started. There was no big hubbub for saving us or anything like that. So I feel like, yes, things are getting better than there, and I want to support them. And like I said, I'll probably vote yes for this. But we need to like really look around. So I'm glad it's happy there where you are. But like I said, the apprenticeship program is still struggling to maintain and keep people in there. Um, and I feel like we're arguing for Andrew here the exact same way we argued for JR, but now it's for Andrew, so everyone's for it. And I mean, we're arguing to keep him on until we find out the facts. Meanwhile, we don't know the fact for JR. I know I'm repeating myself, but he's out on the street. So I just wanted to point that out again. So I think with the words of consistency, we got to remain consistent from JR or lower level up to general manager level. And I argued for JR some of his points, and I will stick it out for Andrew too because I support him and I want him to work it out and you know take care of stuff. But I feel like. We need to look back at how it works. So we're arguing for one, we're not arguing for the other, now we're arguing for the other, we're not arguing for one. We need to remain consistent on the arguments we're having about seeing facts before we cut people loose. Because now we haven't done it for one, but we're right here about doing it for Andrew. Now me, I can say I did it for both, but. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I want to say I really appreciate the arguments made by some of the folks around the room about why we why you're in favor of the motion. I think that was very clear and articulate, and I understand Ben's better. And I've moved at this point from a no on this motion to to abstain. And I would say I'm abstaining because I don't have. I don't, I'm not confident I have that much information about the situation. Um, I think there is uh, legitimacy to, to, the, you know, to the arguments made about you know, how many grievances are out there, issues you know, that we would be holding uh, management accountable at all times in any setting. Um, but at the same time, you know, we don't, I, don't, I don't appreciate the abruptness of this from, from Pacifica. Right, and I think a, a better and more practical framework for us and the position we're in, you know, and, and as, as we move forward, is to understand our power in relation to Pacifica, and what what can we do to be more than just symbolic or activist about saying like, this is what we want, it should be this way, right? Now that most likely we're not going to get it because the system's already set, the bylaws for Pacifica are set, they do have the power over the issue. It's nothing but an uphill climb for us. But how can we bring Pacifica down to this floor? Right and say, now you now you're here. Tell us why you're making this decision because obviously a majority of people here are upset that you're making it the way you are. Right? Maybe it takes a motion to say Pacifica has to come here, even if it's an executive session, and share with us what your plan is, why you're making these decisions, because this affects all of us, especially those those of us elected who are out in the community. And now we're going to be hearing from multiple listeners and people out there in the community telling us what the hell is going on KPFA all over again. Right. So that kind of practical approach is something I'm more in favor of. Um, but directly just trying to like do this, you know, a little like punch out there to see where how far it goes and how far it stings, you know, the people we don't like who are making decisions that we don't uh, agree with. Uh, I think it's more going to be more symbolic than actually practical for us. So for that, I have, personally, I have to say I abstain on this. But I, I appreciate more comments that have been said since I last spoke, as now I understand more clearly why you're so passionate about this motion and keeping Andrew with the, with the organization. Thanks. Andrew, where's house for the floor? 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I didn't re read all of my document. I'm just going to share a little bit with you because I think there's some disputes about this issue. I've been accused of dragging my feet regarding the HR and JR Valerie incident and throwing too much at HR and the National Office, which I will insist asked me to do exactly that. I will insist ask me to do exactly that. I have the paper trail of email that will show that. On January the 10th, at the request of J.R. Valray, January the... Th I'm sorry, okay. Okay. Well, I will just say that um, in terms of the grievances, uh, the CWA um, was told by the interim director that she was handling the grievances, not this manager. And I have yet to see that pile of grievances that uh, Tracy Rosenberg's talking about. Uh, there are grievances which the, which the executive director said she would be dealing with. Now this is problematic for me because authority has been taken from this manager. I've asked constantly for the executive director to act and she has not. And I'm now put in this invidious position and forget about me, the foundation and this radio station is. And this is a storm and a teacup, it's a ruse and it's not right, not just for this manager, but for this organisation, this station, for which I'm the interim general manager. I am ready to call the vote. The motion, as modified by the board's agreement, reads as follows. Based on the information we have as of this date, the KPFA Local Station Board supports continuing the tenure of Andrew Phillips as the Interim General Manager until the process of hiring a permanent General Manager is complete. The Secretary will read the roll. Okay, I see Sharama stepped out, so...